Hi, welcome to this exercise class on my course, Networks and Complexity. If you haven't watched the first video from the course yet, check it out. Link is in the description. But now, let's get right to the exercises. The first exercise is about terminology. So let's see. Here we are asked, count the number of vertices, edges and components in the following network. If you want to give it a shot yourself, now is your chance. You can pause the video and, and give it a try. So, okay. And now, let's do it together. So, we are asked to count the number of vertices. Vertices are the nodes of the network. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six vertices here. Now, we also need to count the number of edges. Edges are the links, so one, two, three. So we have three edges. And now, finally, we need to count the number of components. Components are the connected bits, so one, two, three. So we have three components. And this is the result. This network has six vertices, it has three edges, and it has three components. Wasn't too hard, was it? Let's go on to the next one. So, this is an abstract question. The number of networks. So, we want to compute the number of different networks that can be constructed between seven labeled nodes. If you want to do it yourself, now is your chance to pause the video. Okay, now, let me do it. We have a formula for this from the lecture, don't we? From the lecture, we know this number of networks we are looking for is 2 to the n times n minus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of nodes. Now, here we have seven nodes, right? So we put in the seven. So the answer is 2 to the 7 times 6 divided by 2. 7 times 6, that's 42. If you divide by 2, we have 21. So 2 to the 21. Now, you could put it on your calculator or Google it or whatever. But um, in this course, we are big fans of pen and paper calculations, right? So let's get a rough estimate at least. So there is one thing that I can remember, and that is the number 2 to the 10. 2 to the 10 that shows up a lot in computer science, and that is... 1,024. Uh, so, 1,024. 1,024, that is approximately a 1,000. So, 2 to the 10 is approximately 10 to the 3. And that is a good thing to remember. Because here, for instance, this is 2 to the 10 times 2 to the 10 times 2. So, 2 to the 10 is a thousand, two to the ten is a thousand again, a thousand times a thousand, that's a million times two, that will be two million. So this is an estimate, right? But real number will be slightly higher. But a rough estimate is we have two million networks between seven nodes. Now also the exercise emphasizes labeled. Why is this important? Well, because we haven't talked too much in the lecture, let me explain this now. If you have labeled nodes, right, that means you can distinguish them. So I might have node 1, node 2, node 3, and I can count, connect them in a little network like this here. And if I take the same three nodes, 1 and 2 and 3, and now I connect them in a different network, for instance this one, then I have two networks that I can also distinguish, right? Because here node 2 and 3 are connected and here node 1 and 3 are connected. So the number of these networks, that is what we have been computing. But if I do the same thing with unlabeled nodes, it's quite different here. I have unlabeled nodes and I connect them like this or I have unlabeled nodes and I connect them like this. And now because I can't distinguish the nodes, I also can't distinguish these networks. So these are the same unlabeled networks. They are both chains of three nodes and everything else doesn't matter. They have the same topology. So, and that means there are less unlabeled networks between a given number of nodes than there are, than there are net networks between the same number of labeled nodes. And why I'm telling you this? Well, sometimes also the number 
of networks between unlabeled nodes is of interest and a problem. And we haven't got an efficient formula for this. There are formulas for this number, but they are all formulas that take very long to compute till you get an actual numerical answer. So if you want a tough challenge, if you want an unsolved problem, then you can try to find an efficient formula for the number of networks that can be constructed between a given number of unlabeled nodes. And if you solve that, that's a big advance that you should publish. Well, for now, let's move on to the next question. So here, this is an applied question, the famous pandemic rideshare question. Well, during a pandemic, Dave and Peter are driving home. Their friend Bob asks them if they can give him a lift. However, the two are worried that because such close contracts spread the infection, the, this might create a risk for them or for Bob or for everybody involved. So hmm. Bob argues that another person in the car only increases the size of the group by 50%. Right, we can agree with this, right? From two people to three people, that's a 50% increase in the number of riders. But how much does the number of contacts increase? If you want to try to work it out yourself, now is your chance to pause the video. So now let's do it together. And this we can just do by drawing, right? If there is Dave and Peter in the car, that creates kind of one link in our potential spreading network. And you might want to count this as two contacts, right? Dave has one contact and Peter has one contact. Um, now, if we, if we add um, Bob to the mix here, the, let me make it a bit more Bob here. So if we add Bob to the mix, that gets us two more links. So the number of links increases from one to three. So that is a 200% increase. And the number of contacts, well, that's double counting the links, right? Increases from two to six. Of course, also a 200% increase. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Let's see what the second part says. Dave was planning to have a birthday party with 20 people on Friday night. Now he is wondering how many contacts that would create. Again, if you want to try it yourself, now is your chance to pause the video. And now let's do it together. So this calls, of course, for our equation for the number of links that we can place in a network. In other words, the number of links in a fully connected graph between a given number of nodes. And this formula was this famous n times n minus one divided by two. So this would be the number of links, but if we count the number of contacts, we might be double counting this and then we don't need to divide by this two. Anyway, let's put in the 20. So this is 20 times 19, perhaps divided by two. So 20 times 19, that is uh, 380. And if you divide this by two, we get 190. So at the birthday party, we would have 190 links or 380 contacts for the pandemic to potentially spread across. Interesting, right? We get so many. That is because with group size, this number of contacts increases quadratically. That doesn't mean that the risk to an individual person increases quadratically, right? This is still linear because every person has only a linear increase in the number of contacts they are involved in. But still, it's interesting that large gatherings are very, very good for the pandemic, right? From the epidemic's point of view, that is a good opportunity to spread to many people. So I um, hope you enjoyed these little exercises. That was a very quick run through. If you want more exercises, there will be much more in my book that is going to be published for Springer. So by the time you watch this, it might actually be out. So, and of course, this will have more exercises and fully worked solutions. But now you could also move on to the second part of the video. If this is out now, it will be here. See you for the next one.